All right, if you're working in React at all, you're probably going to be making a lot of different components. So going through and manually typing out all the boilerplate that you need for every new component can be a little bit time consuming. Maybe you have some snippet library. So let's see, let's say we create a new component here and then maybe you have some snippet library here just to fill in some things for you. And so that's an easy way that you can make a component. But what if you also want to be making other things for this? Say we want a style sheet for this maybe. Maybe we want to test this component as well. So we'd have to be making a test component as well. And just creating a whole bunch of different files and copy and pasting the same thing over and over again can take a little bit of time. So there is actually an easier way to do this and it's called React Generate CLI. And basically it's a way that you can make components on the command line. So let me just open my terminal right here. And instead of going through and manually creating a whole bunch of files, we need a test file, a CSS file, maybe even more if you want something more complicated. We can just run the command npx generate react CLI component and then new component or the name of your component, whatever you want to name it here. So if we run this syntax right here, uh, the first thing it'll do is ask you a few questions about your project because it is the first time we're running it, so it wants to set up a few things. It's asking me, does this project use TypeScript? It does not. Does it use CSS modules? It does not. Does it use a CSS preprocessor? Let's go with SCSS. What testing library does it use? It uses testing library. And let's put it in the default directory, which is source components. It's asking me would I like a corresponding style sheet file? Let's go with that. Would you like a test file? Yes. Would you like a corresponding story? This is a storybooks UI, which I actually haven't used at all. So I can't tell you too much about it, but if you use it, that can be helpful. I'll say no. And it's asking me if I would like to create a file that will lazy load my React components. I don't really need that right now, so let's say no. And once you've gone through all that initial setup, then you will have a new file in your project directory called generate react cli.json. Let's close out the terminal a little bit. And so this is basically just a JSON file of all the options that you just selected. And of course, if you want to change it later on, you can just come in here and say, I do want to use TypeScript, something like that. But let's just leave all these right now as they are. And let's take a look in our components directory. And as you can see, we have a new component.js file with the new component. It's importing React, prop types, the SCSS file that we told them to create. You can put all of your styles in here. A test file so you can check to see if this component mounts or not. And it's a whole lot of nice boilerplate that we don't have to write every single time. Literally all you have to do is run one command on the command line. Now this is kind of a long command. Uh, as you can see it's a bit of a mouthful but I'm sure you could alias this in your ZSHRC or bash RC to something simpler if you use this a whole lot. That would be very easy to do and you could just alias all of this as something like, I don't know, generate react CLI. I haven't done that personally, but you can do that. Now you might not necessarily want all the same options for every single component that you make using generate react CLI. So maybe instead of react components, you want to make some react pages and you want to change some things around. So maybe you don't get the test file and you can do that if you edit this JSON file right here. So the default is going to be this components directory, as you can see. But what if we also wanted to have, let's say, another type called pages. This can obviously be whatever you want. Let's say we want to create a new type of page. And we want it in a different directory. Instead of components, we want it to be in pages. And let's say we don't want tests. And maybe we don't even want styles for this. We just want the component itself and nothing else. And so now in order to run this, what we're going to do is run npx generate react CLI component, new component, all that's going to be the same. Let's change the name of this. But the only difference is we're going to add this type option at the end. We're going to say type is equal to page. And then it will create a page with all of the options that we have specified here. So if I've set it up correctly, yep, we have a new pages directory. And it just has the component inside it nothing else, there's no CSS, there's no test file. So we now have two separate types 
and you can add as many as you want with as many different options as you want. So that's nice if you don't want all the options to be the same all of the time. All right, now all of this is well and good as long as we want all of this boilerplate for every single component, but we might want to change some of this boilerplate. Maybe I don't actually want to import prop types here. I want to remove all of these prop types and I don't need them. So what we can do is we can create a custom template that Generate React CLI will use instead of the default. So let me just go ahead and copy all of this and let's create a new folder in the root directory called templates and put inside that template name.js. Okay, paste all this in. Okay, and now we're just going to replace all the names in this file with template name. And whenever you create a new component with generate React CLI, it will just replace all these keywords of template name. It'll replace those with the name that you specify when you create a new component. So let's delete all the props. As I said, we don't want them in this template and replace all of these with template name. That's also why this file is called template name. It will replace the file name with the uh, name of the component that you make. Go over here, save this. And now in order to use the new template that we made, we're going to want to come in here and let's just affect this default component right here and say custom templates is going to be, let's say the component is going to be templates slash template name.js. Okay, it should find this whenever we create a new template. So let's just see if this works correctly and run this again. And let's create another component just with the default settings. And if I've set this up correctly, then it should use this new template that we specified instead of the old one. Let's check in here. And yeah, as you can see, there's no prop types. So it has successfully overwritten this with the new template. And you can put as many different templates as you want in here. Let's say we also wanted a custom style sheet. So what you can do here is replace this with style. And then you can create a new custom style sheet template here. Let's just say style.css. I don't actually have that here, but Obviously, you can imagine that it would replace this as well. And you can do the same with the other templates as well. You can replace all of these. So style, test, story, lazy. You can replace all of these with custom templates if you wish. And last but not least, you can even add your own templates that aren't even included with these. So say we don't want a style sheet. We don't want a test sheet or any of these. We want our own. Let's say in all of these new components, we want to add an index.js file because if you wanted to import this uh, another component here what you would have to do is import let's say components slash another component and then another component right here so if we wanted to make this a little bit shorter and only say this we want to import like this right now it's not going to work but if we add an index.js file in here it will so let me go ahead and create that inside the templates directory here and then in here, we're just going to have export default from, let's say, template name. And now we're going to want to go into here, the config file again. We're going to want to add the custom template down here. So let's change this to index and then get the correct template. And then finally, we want to add another option right here let's say with index, this will just be the name of this right here inside your custom templates and then change this to true. And if that was all done correctly, then this should work. Let's create one last component. Oh, I forgot that we don't actually have a custom style sheet here. Let me remove that and then generate this one more time. And we can look in here inside our one last component. And we now have an index.js with the template that we just specified. So you can add as many templates as you want. You can completely fill up every component with as many as you want here. And so you can customize all the boilerplate to your heart's content. Oh, and one more thing, because I forgot before, but when you're creating these new components, what you can do is, uh, let's say, 
final component here. If you specifically want one component with different defaults than the other one, maybe for this one we want to lazy load it. So we specifically want uh, this one to be with lazy, but not all components, just this one specifically. We can pass in all these options right here. Let's say with lazy equal to true. And of course you can do it with all of these. Some, Some of the other, other options, options are also path. path. So, so if you want a custom path here, let's say we want this one to go in slash source slash pages, then you can also customize that as well. And of course I've already been over type. We're just going to leave it at the default type of component right now. Run that and you will get the component with uh, updated options. And only this one will be affected. All the defaults will remain the same. So as we can see, this is in pages. It now has a lazy loading file. And so with Generate React CLI, you really have a lot of different options to really just make everything easier whenever you're creating components. No longer do you have to copy and paste all this boilerplate code. You can just run a couple of commands and you're a set. So if you're working with a big project and you run into this use case a lot, you need to add a whole bunch of different components and you want to save some time, I would really recommend this library. I'll leave a link to it in the description. And if you want to check out the full options, you can do so on the GitHub. So this says pretty much everything I talked about. It has all the options that you can add. And so this is just a good reference. If you're confused about anything, you can just come here, take a look. And hopefully this helped you. And now you can make your React components a little bit faster than before.